and uh, we've been doing it ever since uh, because I wanted to uh, encourage people on their creative journey, or even if you're not doing anything creative, if you're just like, you know, I don't know what, an accountant, although accounting can be very creative, but I just want to uh, encourage people and uh, it's been fun. So we want to thank the Public Theater for allowing us to do this show for 11 years and also thank HowlRound for giving us the opportunity to be all fancy ass digital and shit. Um, what we do is we work together for 20 minutes and then we talk about your work and your creative process. And uh, if you have a question, Audrey will tell you how to get in touch. Go Audrey. Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you're inside of the Zoom and you have a question, all you need to do is click on the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and you can, uh, inside of that participant tab, there's a little button that says raise your hand and you click on it, raise the little blue hand, we'll call on you if we have time. And then if you're watching on howround.tv, <laughs> Uh, you can tweet at us at, at @watchmeworkslp with the hashtag #hellround h o w l r o u n d, or you can tweet at the Public Theater's Twitter, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram, and that's it. That's pretty much everything. So we're going to do what we always do. We're going to work together for twenty minutes, and then we're going to talk. Okay. Yes. Love you guys. Have fun. <laughs>
right, all right. Here we are. Here we are. Here we We've are. got some questions already. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Melania, you're up first. Hey, Melania. Hello, Susan Larry. Thank you, Audrey. How are you? I'm good. Happy to see you. Happy to see you too. I have a question about something that is not happening to me right now, but I know that is coming and I would like to know uh, your opinion. Today, here in Miami, we listen to the people from school and mm -hmm. it seems that the first part of the, at least one month is going to be again, a school at home, mm -hmm. all the, the situation. And I know the craziness that, that is. I, am, I have the experience now, so I think it's going to be better. But what I would like to, to know and for you to, to remind me is how to be, it's so, there's happened so many things around in the world. Mm -hmm. All the justice, all these uh, people deciding what to do with schools and life and things. And in the middle of that, I am uh, trying to write. And with that writing, I am trying to you know, to, to have this no knowing myself and trying to to really don't be drowned in, uh -huh. in all that uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I try to what I try to do is to show up to my work. Right. I'm here, I do my, my working, I my yoga, meditation. Right. But is there anything else that I can learn to you know, to, to be in this situation with a wise attitude, I pray, of course, but you know that because what, what I noticed that happens is that when these things get very crazy, the first thing that goes away is my writing or I, I get so, mm -hmm. so anxious that I can't write or I get stuck. And I don't want that anymore because it's not nice. It was... Uh, I had years of experience in that, and I don't want that. That's the reason why I said, okay, today I want to tell this, and I want to ask so I am not alone in this process. Right. I know that is coming. That's great. That's really a great, great question, Melania. And it's something we can revisit, you know, in, yeah. in days ahead and weeks ahead as we go forward. Um, I would say, uh, and your kids, are they're... Teenager tweens? We have uh, Sophie is 12, Chloe okay. is nine, and Casey is five. Oh, okay. Oh, five. Okay. Okay. Well, we can say this it's never too early to hip their children to what's really important to mommy, right? Okay. I mean, you know, with Durham, and I only have one kid, so my experience is, you know, not like yours. Three is a lot. I mean, three is a lot, would be a lot for me, like, ah, because one is a lot. But um, it's it's a great opportunity to remind, I mean, you your kids already know this, but to remind them how important your writing is to you okay. and how, how it's really important that mommy gets her writing done. So, I mean, what I tell Durham, you know, I say, when you see mommy sitting at her desk, you know, yeah. when you see mommy with the timer, you know, and we see mommy right, you know, writing or, you know, the computer, you know, she's working, you know, so he, you know, he'll come in and maybe if he really needs something, you know, he, he, so he knows how to um, respect my writing process, okay. you know, so you continually encourage them and ask them to respect your writing process. So you get that from outside, right? Okay. And then comes the bigger foe if you will you because you have to respect you have to continually respect your writing process and continual continually remind yourself of how important it is right so you have to do things like set a time you know um you have yoga you have meditation which is great you can tack it on to that you know, so then the more you might need to get up a little earlier. That's what I'm finding because now I'm in my mom's house and my son, my mom, my si everybody's here and swirling around, you know. Um, so I, I, I have to get up a little earlier in the morning. That's helpful. Connect it to things that you do regularly every day, your yoga practice, your meditation practice, your writing practice. Or you can write first and then do meditation, then yoga, you know, clump them together, right? Okay, perfect. Um, 
and so and and make sure that you're getting something done every day it doesn't have to be 10 hours of writing you know what i mean it can be 20 minutes it doesn't have to be great writing it can be writing i'm saying it doesn't have to be heroic you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, you don't have to climb everest every day or tame the 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 child within or whatever whatever the, you know what i'm saying you just have to show up and 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 be there for your writing right like your meditation practice like your yoga practice some days like in my yoga practice oh i can get that pose other days i'm like forget about it don't even worry about it so that's the other thing so you get your your family to respect your writing and you get yourself you, you remind yourself how important your writing is by showing up every day mm -hmm. and third thing you practice compassion to yourself. Oh man, yeah. So it so that if one day you show up and it's twenty minutes and you spend the whole time going, shit, I gotta order shit from Instacart. I forgot to order the honey. Damn, I forgot to order the Wheaties. Oh no, what are we gonna have for dinner? Like that. If that's what your writing period is, or you spend your writing period making a grocery list because you know, you guys need the, your groceries, right? It's okay. That's, that's wonderful too. Okay. So, yeah. Yes, yes. But because I, I have now the, the morning that it, I try to read my Bible, pray, the yoga, the meditation, and, but I'm going to add the, the writing, if I, that, that's a good idea. And I love the idea of being compassionate to myself because sometimes I, I practice that with a lot of people. I try to be compassionate and I say that we have to, but with myself, sometimes I forget. So yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Melania. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Kelly. Hey, Kelly, where are you? Kelly. I'm here. Hey, Hi. Kelly. Hi. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm great. I'm in Kenya right now. It's midnight. It's after midnight. But I know, I just, I love you. I saw the uh, public theater um, link. I guess I'm the late, I'm just late to the party. I didn't know this was a thing. Oh, you're right on years, time, Chris. You're right on time. 11 years later. <laughs> um, and so I, I used to just like read and like direct your work in college. And I'm so excited. Um, so thank you to public theater and thank you to you. In any case, um, so I'm, I'm writing a piece, I just wanna name some fears and then ask a question. So I'm writing a piece that I think is geared towards young audiences um, and like like high school, middle age, and I'm just like, or middle grades, I'm just like, do young people wanna watch theater? You know, so that, I just wanna name that as a fear that I have, first of all. Um, and I wonder what, you know, you do if certain fears like that come up, like are, will the people that I want to see my work be able to see my work, like is, um, theater is still the thing that the world needs, you know? Um, questions like that come up for me, just the relevance of the form. But then I also um, am wondering, almost similar to what Milani was asking, but kind of like a bit back into your history and maybe you've written extensively or spoken extensively, uh, extensively about this, but just before you knew it was a viable career path for you, like what are the things that you told yourself to keep yourself writing? Like, I'm just wondering about like young Susan Laurie, like I was on last night hearing you talk about the New Yorican, and, you know, just like, I get the passion and the drive that comes from those, you know, areas. Was it being in community that had you keep writing and keep writing? Like, before you knew that you could be you, you know, or did you always know, like, what, what had you like moving steadily towards that, you know? I hear you. I hear you. Those are beautiful questions. Um, um, the first thing about, you know, is theater the thing? There's so many things, you know, I mean, back in the day before any of us were around born, you know, when there were, you know, when all we had were campfires and things like that, you know, theater was, it didn't have a lot of competition. You know, it was kind of, you know, you had to work or, you know, it was the only game in town really. So with every new game in town, it does have to, if you, you know, want to think about it, compete with, you know, other things going on like bear baiting, or, you know, back in shape, right? So it always had something to compete with. And mm -hmm. now there are even more games. I do think children, I mean, I, mean, I, I think young people, however you want to call them, um, get a lot out of 
the performing arts, whether they're spectators or uh, involved in it, either as actors or writers or directors or uh, what do you call them? gaffers? You know, what I mean, what, lighting designers. You know, those mm -hmm. kinds of. I think they get a lot. Yeah, choreographers or dancers. I think they get a lot out of it. Um, uh, in my experience, so I still think it's 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 relevant. I think uh, people talk, standing in front of other people and pretending they're someone else is a great thing for, I mean, it's a very beautiful thing that we humans enjoy and we can learn a lot from it. So I still think, I think it's an important thing. It's not the only game in town, mm -hmm. you know, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a lot of power. And we know how much power it has, just the power of being around people, you know, yeah. bodies next to bodies, doing things. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of power in that and a lot of beauty um, and much to be culturally conveyed, you know, regardless of what culture you're from. So I think there's still a lot to it. Um, and how did I, you know, how do, how did I keep going back then? It's it, funny, Kelly, it's the same way I keep going now, you know? I mean, sure, a lot of it comes from community, but I mean, I, I, I enjoyed being in those communities. I didn't, necessarily I wasn't uh, ca necessarily carried along by any certain community I was more often than not the weird one the one who wasn't really in you know <laughs> you know um, I tried to get in you know I, I mean I hung out with a lot of people up but I I was kind of on the outsides all the time so I had to maybe develop things that, you know, when you're welcomed in a community and buoyed by the community, you get a lot of that. I never really got a lot of that, but I did find, I did grab whatever I could. So if my writing teacher was James Baldwin. I held on to that. And, you know, um, I talked to myself a lot. Like, you can do it. Keep going. That's beautiful. I would go outside a lot and look at the sky and say, help me, please help me, please help me. <laughs> like that sounds really weird. If you'd known me back then, you'd be like, who's that crazy girl walking around looking at the sky? You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's who I was. So I relied on community as much as I could. But Kelly, I also relied on the spirit. And that's, and that's why I like doing this watch me work thing, because I want to encourage you all through my presence to connect with the spirit you know so it's it's not a it's not a it's a community but it's more of a like a you know tune your radio tune your inner radio set your inner compass to that spirit that you all have you know um does that make does that make sense uh yes absolutely thanks very much thank you thank you thank you Thank you. And I don't want to discount the importance of community like this community is very important, but hopefully this community will encourage you to hear, feel that community inside yourselves. Mm -hmm. And when I have students come to me and go, I, I never would have been a writer if it wasn't for you. I say, no, 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 you would have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You yeah. were you before I met you. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. encouraged you to look. You would have looked eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thanks so much. You know so thank you for, for tuning in from Kenya because you're far away, sister. So everything yeah. okay with you over there? I mean, you're all yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. really beautiful. I came in January for some travel and then the borders were closing. And so I had to either rush out or stay. And I chose to stay and the borders aren't open yet. <laughs> the borders are still closed. Uh, but um, well, but it's been a really amazing creative journey, so I'm grateful. So. Wow, Kelly. Well, we love you all the way from here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I love y'all all the way over here. <laughs> Thanks, wow. Kelly. Thank you. All right, we're gonna go to Crystal. Uh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Crystal? How's it go? How's it going? Um, it's 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 going. It's it's um. Oh man, it's a battle. It's a battle, but I'm I'm willing to fight. Yesterday I wasn't. I was almost ready to give up, and I was like, "Why am I a writer?" Um, but um, but I I thank you for the reminder to to be ca passion uh, 
be compassionate to yourself. Like I, I'm, I'm learning with this, especially, I need a lot more self-given grace um, as I'm praying and working on trying to do this. Um, so right now, I'm, it's literally like pieces of glass, just trying to piece things together. Um, I'm working backwards. Um, I think I'm from working backwards, I'm answering the question, how did Christianity come to hate? I think it's coming because I think the language that I'm using is more of language I heard as a kid um, in, in churches or some that I hear now um, that's used to um, sometimes used in places to manipulate, um, to manipulate the word of God and to manipulate um, um, how God works or his love. Um, I think I have the, the question answered how do I, how did I get here? Um, what do I hope for? I'm still struggling with. And who am I? I'm still struggling with. And I don't have a beginning. I feel like the beginning that I had does not work anymore. Um, but I thought that it was the explanation to who she is and, and why she is the way she is. But I think it, it, it only answers her as a singer, but, and a, beauty pageant queen, but it doesn't answer her as a, um, I guess, a, an activist kind of person who becomes this demagogue. Um, the action, the action list helps so much. You even said something that spun my whole story around that changed one part that made it more active. Um, I think I have to write another action list because I'm just I feel like my action lists are not active. They're more like feeling active. Like they're like, there's still things like to do to another person, like to yell or to scream <laughs> or something like that, but it's not active, like to kind of propel things like, you know, um, in that way. So that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm a little over halfway done um, but I'm, 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 I'm trying to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, but I am having trouble with that answer. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm just running my mouth and my mute on. You need a beginning that works, right? I need to, yeah, you I need, need a beginning. need a beginning, right? Okay. Um, so tell me this, um, do, do you, uh, when, when's the last, uh, what, what is the floor of, is that your office right there that you're sitting in? Where are you? You're sitting in your living room? No, in my dining room. It's your dining room. Great. What's the, what's the floor made out of? What is it a carpet or is it a? It's carpet. Is there any wood visible? No. Do you have a bathroom in your house? Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, when's the last time you cleaned the bathroom? Oh, Lord. Good. That's good. <laughs> okay, check it. Okay, this is what I want you to do. Um, because what you what I want you to do is do some activities and then do some other activities. Okay. So, um, not right this second, but after we're done, I want you to sometime between today and tomorrow, I want you to make another action list. Right. Okay. okay. And then I want you to go and clean your bathroom. Huh. Yeah. And then I want you to come back and make a list of 20 uh, stupid uh, or 10 stupid ways that my play could begin. Okay. And then I want you to spend 20 minutes tidying up your living room or wherever it is that you, I mean, your dining room, wherever you write. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I want, I want you to get this kind of out of your head and into your body. Um, a, a few minutes ago, I was, I was, I mean, a few minutes ago, a couple hours ago, I was writing today and I, and I, uh, I took a, a break and I went outside. I'm at my mom's house, right? She's got this huge ginormous yard, big garden and a sidewalk with little, you know, she's like, I got to weed the sidewalk. You know, I went out there and stood out there and just pulled weeds. It was like, this is a great thing to do in between writing. There you are actually doing, you're doing something. Uh -huh. Body, right? Like we had, uh, uh, what was his name? Nick? 
walk him down the stairs when he was trying to formulate his synopsis? A couple, uh -huh. Last week or whatever it was, a brother named Nick with a beanie cap he was, right? So what I want you to do is write a list of 10 or, or, or write another action list, 20 actions, 20, okay? And then go to your bathroom, then write 10 ways your play can begin and tidy up your writing area. You understand? Yeah. Okay. okay. And that way, even if you make a list of actions that you don't love, you're at least gonna have a clean bathroom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, we keep you laughing. See, we keep you laughing. We keep you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> um, all right. Up next, we've got Grace. Grace, are you there? Oh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, hi, SLP. Um, I've been coming since I uh, started coming in June, and this is the first time I've asked a question, but thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for doing this. It's been like such a great way to show up um, for writing. Um, I'm working on a, a play for one character. Um, mm -hmm. And like my usual background of making work is uh, like is um, sort of ensemble devising. So it's like I'll do writing, I'll work with other people, um, mm -hmm. and it'll be a combination of improvisation and writing and kind of creating that way. Um, and usually there are deadlines. Uh, so right now I'm in a situation where um, I'm really excited to be working on this piece, but it's uh, there isn't a deadline. Um, I'm really pretty much on my own with it. Um, and I'm struggling because I've been working on it for about like about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten like a ton of writing done and I'm really, um, I like the things that I have, but I keep, uh, it's gone through like so many iterations. Um, and I, um, it's like, I can't settle on anything. Like it's hard for me to make a decision and go, okay, now I'm gonna go with this. Cause I keep finding new things, but then that changes it. And I know what the theme is and I know the character, um, but I'm getting, uh, I'm getting basically bogged I, I don't know, I'm getting sort of caught up in how many different ways there are to tell this story. And that means that I'm not like settling, I think, and going deeper into like it really being a strong, like a being a thing <laughs> that is clear and um, like, and exists. Uh, so I wonder if you could just speak to that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, uh, so you, you're enjoying working alone. Yeah, uh, I, I am, and I actually forced myself to um, uh, a week ago to bring a trusted collaborator in, and I did a staged reading for her, uh -huh. um, just of sort of uh, like five scenes. Uh -huh. um, and I've worked with her before, and she usually like causes me to really uh, like step my work up. But actually showing it to her this time has kind of um, uh, the the past week. I've actually had a harder time coming back to it. Um, that's sort of a separate thing, oh, um, but yeah, I've been enjoying working by myself, but then getting this feedback also kind of actually destabilized the chaotic train I was already on, but yeah, so it's oh, also oh, kind oh. of that. Okay, so, hmm, that's, that's true. So yeah, that is, a, that's kind of a separate thing. So if yeah. you, no, but it's, a, they're both good questions. Um, so when you read these, so you had enough of it kind of pull together to read something aloud for your trusted collaborator. Yeah, I had like the whole arc of it and then certain pretty solid um, scenes and ideas. Do you think it was the presentation of it to your trusted collaborator that made you feel like you were not on the right track? Uh, yes, except um, I also think that her feedback was really good. <laughs> So it was not what I expected, but I think it's like, I want to take it, but I'm also confused uh, because it's not, because it feels so different from what I had, what I was thinking about. Um, and I guess like maybe it's sort of that I, I think differently when I'm working by myself versus when I'm working with people, because um, mm -hmm. I, I love collaborating with other folks and like right. really feel like I'm actually very confident in doing that. And I feel less. It, uh, 
yeah, less able to realize something when I'm just by myself. Sure, sure, sure. But it sounds like you've done a, a, a huge amount of work all by yourself. It sounds like your trusted collaborator had a maybe a different idea. Um, it sounds like what you want to do in a weird kind of way is revert to your old way of working, which is take the notes of the trusted collaborator. You know, that, you know, sometimes uh, we, we, you know, it's like the rubber band effect. We go far out, you know, and then you kind of snap back to the way yeah. you ordinarily are or have been for most of your life. Um, it's weird. As an experiment, is there any way that you could keep going on the way that you kind of set out for yourself by yourself? Uh, well, maybe it's, uh, I could, and I actually was really excited, like have been really excited about that. Um, and what her advice was, was um, what I see is that she's pushing me more towards action and less towards like representing an idea. Like, I think what she said caused me to feel like I didn't, like the play was not active enough. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, so I'm like, I feel like a, <laughs> I feel like a good strong piece of theater would be to follow her advice, whereas to follow what I'm doing means I don't know what will happen, and that's exciting. But also, I might just be so far off on the wrong track uh, in terms of making something that's playable. Um, well, right, I I hear you. So, but we're still, you're still in the like the making stages of it. So, have you reached the end of your? of your piece have you have you gotten to the end i mean you said you have the whole arc of it uh yes yeah i have but it could end a few different ways too when, and that comes back to the multiple ways of telling the story sure um, sure so, yeah. it, so you have you have the whole structure is there anything in getting a second opinion uh may maybe yeah maybe yeah because if you, it, I mean, if you had a really strong sense of what you wanted to do, then I'd say, you know, go with that. But it seems like you're, you're sort of wavering between the two ways you could do it. Can you get a second? Of, yeah. Can you, can you read it to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Could. Um, Cause my, my sense is, I really think it's great that you've written and created something by yourself. And I would love to see you take that version of it as far as you can. You know, because you can always go back and do the other version. I mean, you can have two versions of a similar theme, character thing. You know, you can have two versions. Oh, okay. You know? Great. Yeah. Like, yeah. See, see what another friend, you know, rope in, wrangle another trusted collaborator, and see what they think. That'd be fun. Okay. And it would give you a chance to air it again. Great. You know. Okay. Great. Do you have actually, could you just speak also really quickly to the question that I had at the beginning, which is a little more, um, but um, of so many different ways to tell a story and then like finding, like, do you ever find that you get sidetracked with the, the like I have so much writing that it means that there are only a couple things that I know that I'm like, yes, that's it, yes, that's it. And then there's so much stuff that I'm like, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. But it, I don't know if it's the bones or it's just like, yeah, I, I think you really have to just um, keep writing and the things that are supposed to be there will stay and grow and the things that are supposed to be somewhere else will kind of fall away and can be used for other things. Yeah, but until you have a really strong sense of what it is, yeah, like, you know, I'm driving to California, then you can just be driving your car up and down the BQ, you know, around and around the BQE, you know what I mean? I mean, it can be or up and down the 405 or what you don't know so until you know kind of this is where i'm going yeah it's a little tricky to know what you're going to need okay yeah so cool. thanks grace thank thanks, you sir. um all right we've got about 10 minutes left and we're going to go to debbie debbie hey. are you there hi can you hi this is yeah. Debbie. hi First time we're here. I just started last week. Thanks so much. Hey, Debbie. This has been an amazing experience. Um, I hadn't been doing much of any writing in years and years, and I just plugged into you guys last week and stared down a blank piece of paper and, you know, just just figuring out what to do and just kept filling it up, just like you said, filling it up, filling it up. Then I've been doing that daily, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. And then yesterday in the fill up, fill up, then um, I started hearing something and feeling something. And it was like, oh, 
oh, gee, I don't know, where did this come from? And I'm just filling up the page and it was like, oh, wow, you know, a character and, and senses were coming. And I was so excited that I was going to mention something yesterday if I figured out how to raise my hand. So today, um, this afternoon, I was going back to it, ready to type it up to see what I was so excited about. And then I'm looking at it like, this is, what is this crap coming from? What am I going to do with this? What am I supposed to, what, you know, I had no idea. Something that was so exciting at one point just turns into mush the next day. And I'm sure um, mm -hmm. you, you've covered that. Um, you know, you mentioned even yesterday, writing gobbledygook. It's fine. Baby talk gobbledygook. Just get it down. Mm -hmm. But how do you break past the barrier of just looking at your stuff like this is, this is garbage. What am I supposed to be doing this, with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it happens to no, no. Well, first and foremost, Debbie, congratulations. Great. That you're taking this, you know, you're really diving into this this uh, way of being that is is you know a, such a cool thing. It's it's really really great. So you have to like yay, do that. Um, and th then the other good thing is you can know that you know artists of renown go through that kind of thing all the time. I remember uh, this funny because I never remembered this about. Um, James Baldwin, he would talk about, you know, uh, writing something in the, you know, the excitement of writing something in the evening, you know, and then, you know, coming downstairs the next morning and realizing Jesus, you know, what is that? He wouldn't say Jesus, but you know, what is this? You know, that kind of thing. Um, it's like the morning after feeling, you know, you can go, yeah, you look good last night, but this morning, who are you again? Um, so there's that there's, um, Funny, I'm, so I'm doing a thing on Aretha Franklin and Jerry Wexler, her producer from Atlantic, used to say, you know, it sounds good tonight, but the real test will be if it sounds good in the morning, then we know we've got something. Um, and if not, then you, you fix it. Um, so the thing is, you write something, you love it on Monday. On Tuesday, you're going like, mm, I don't know. Um, you keep going. You just keep going and know that, that um it's a it's a writing process it's an artistic it's a creative process you know so on monday you might write something that you love tuesday you might go hmm i don't really love it so much anymore and your choices are either you show up at your writing desk on tuesday anyway or you quit right and then when you realize that that's the choice you've got what you're going to do you're going to show up at your writing desk anyway and continue working because what you're doing is you're learning your craft and you're, you're, you're just building your, your artistic muscles. Right. And part of that doubt or that misgivings you have, Oh no, I don't know if that's any good. That's part of the artistic process. That's part of what you're learning to work through or work with. You could say that doubt Thomas, you know, the saint was a doubter. Doubting is an article of faith. So you're in good company when you go, hmm, I don't know. It's okay. Not knowing is, is, is a good thing. You know? Okay. So we just, we just continue. We just keep on keeping on, you know? Thank you. Thank you. That's very, it's very helpful. And then just wondering there might be something to, in going back over these pages to glimmer, there might be some glimmers to pick out or, or not, or just mm -hmm. at least you have pages to go through. Exactly. At least you have pages to go through. You're, you're building your creative muscles. You know, you're building confidence. You know, uh, you're, you're, you're building stamina. You're opening up your, your mind and your heart to the muse and the, and the spirit, you know? All those things are happening. No effort is ever wasted. So you just continue. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Debbie. Um, all right, we've got about four minutes left. We're going to go to Lynn. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. Lynn, are you there? Mm -hmm. um, click oh, there you go. Hi, yesterday, we were, somebody was asking if you were, you were, hi, you were telling about, um, talking about reading Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to share just the best app in the world for Shakespeare. And it was, it was created by a number of people, including Ian McKellen. And uh, it's called uh, Heuristic, H-E-U-R, 
I S T I C Shakespeare. And the first play they did, they did was Tem The Tempest. And I'm telling you, if you just take a look at this, everybody, you will love Shakespeare. It, it, it does everything like a Luddite like me. You will know the play backwards and forwards, the history, the translations of odd um, words that is not in our lexicon, but in Shakespeare's time was. It's just so wonderful. And then you, it also has really wonderful actors reading the play along. If you're reading the play, you can hear it too. And it's cool. And there's amazing artwork and it's just wonderful for everybody. So I'd like to share that with you. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Yeah. That's so cool. Thanks, Lynn. Really cool. Um, all right, so we've got about two minutes left, and we're going to go to your, this person who's listed as Fox. Oh, uh, that's me. Um, can you hear me? Hey. Yes, hi. Sorry, I didn't change my box. My name is Faulkner Fox, and Fox is my last name. Um, I have been a writer for a while, but I'm writing my first play now, and I have a question that relates to some of the questions other people have had, uh, which is just about when are you alone and working alone, and when in a pandemic, are you working with actors on Zoom? So I just recently thought I've been checking too much stuff out. Like I've been writing scenes and making them complete in themselves because I knew there were people gonna be watching. And then I thought, but I've lost track of the whole by, by checking too much. But since this is all new to me, I really appreciate how I can see my words brought to life when an actor acts them. And sometimes now I've thought, well, when I look at the page as itself, I can't see it. So I'm just wondering if you might speak to that about when do you send it out and watch an actor push it back? And when do you kind of hang in there and be internal and quiet in your pandemic house? You know, my house, my pandemic house is not quiet, but yeah, but no, I, no, I, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, you mean individual scenes from a play? Yes. Yes. So like, I'm, so because I'm new to it, I feel like, oh, let me check that out with the actors as opposed oh. to, so I wrote one whole draft checking nothing and then had people come to my house and act it. And I realized that I had written people talking in paragraphs. So I figured, no, that's not good. So I'm just, I'm just learning and I'm just learning by doing, but I'm just wondering about that dynamic between learning in the privacy of my home with the three kids in the background or learning with having actors read it back to me. Right, right. That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I tend to, I'm slow to show. So I, I, I tend to, uh, if I write a whole draft and I give it to actors and, well, I mean, but next time you'll know, I mean, congratulations for trying a new kind of writing after writing other, other in other ways, other forms. But if I, um, f you know, get handed it to actors and finding out the speeches are, feel a little long, you know, feels a little wordy, um, that's okay. It trains my ear for next time. Um, but I tend to write the whole thing, a draft of the whole thing before I give it out, send it out. Um, because um, getting feedback in the middle of the process to me is not helpful. Then I'm, I'm listening to some actors while they be brilliant and smart and everything. I, I am more interested in listening to the spirit, my internal voice, the higher power, you know, the guiding light, whatever you, not the soap opera, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, so I would say, I would say, um, instead of handing scenes to actors over zoom and hearing it back that way, I would say develop what I think composers have and musicians can do is that they can hear their work without, you know, hiring a whole band to play it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, a band or actors are brilliant amplifiers, gr great speakers, right? But you as a dramatist um, want to develop 
the ability to hear your work just from your own mouth. And so stand up in front of your kids, ha ha, and read your scene. <laughs> Um, you know, that kind of, or, or just read it aloud to yourself, you know, in the privacy of, of, of a room, you know, um, I think that's a really, you, then you do your ear training also. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that could be more helpful in a way. I mean, since I've been a, a poet and a nonfiction writer before this, I'm very comfortable and familiar. I would never think anything was done until I'd read it out loud, like a ton of times, but drama feels different because they're different characters. And so I've got to embody everybody when yeah. I read it, which I, I could do. Yeah. Right, that's the fun of it, right? You get to yeah. you get to embody your all your characters. I think that's the joy of it. Definitely, yeah. you can do it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, it's 6.03. We've done it again. We've done, we've done it again. You're amazing. <laughs> You're amazing. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody. People. Yeah, okay. Well, as you all know, if you sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern, um, uh, Monday to Thursday, I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. And the signups are on the Public Theater website and on HowlRound. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Right, thank you. Thanks, SLP. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.